All right, hi guys. Tonight I'm just going to do a quick video on a rebuttal to Roy Spencer's article about me today where he says that I am ranting about flat earth physics, flat earth theory. So uh, here's his article copied over to Principia Scientific. His article is titled On the Flat Earth Rants of Joe Postma by Roy Spencer, PhD, maybe in physics or climatology at least. So here he just introduces that he is aware of me and has had some interactions with me before. Then he um, copies these diagrams, which uh, I've been showing you guys a whole lot about lately. So here's Roy's active paragraph, the one where he rebuts what I've been trying to teach you guys about. So I'll just read it. So it says, Joe's claim, as far as I can tell, is that the solar flux value, often quoted around 342 watts per meter squared, is unrealistic because it is for a flat Earth. But as an astrophysicist, he should recognize that the division by four in those figures takes the solar constant at the distance of the Earth from the Sun and spreads it over the spherical shape of the Earth. Thus, the 442 watts per meter squared value represents a spherical, not a flat Earth. All right, so this is good. So he's stating what is being done in those diagrams, and he says because they're spreading the sunshine over a spherical Earth, and that's where the factor of 4 comes from, then it is spherical Earth physics and not flat Earth physics. Let's pull up the diagram where that mathematics is happening. Now let's just think for a moment here. So this is cute that Roy states that this is what's happening and then says that because that's what's happening that it is therefore okay. But let's just look at this active part here. So what does this diagram do? What does this mathematics do? It takes the solar constant and spreads it over the spherical shape of the earth. Now let me ask you something. So you state that that's what's happening because you've stated that that's what's happening. Does it make, make it okay that that's what's happening? Does that ever occur? Is that a physical thing that is happening either on average or instantaneously for the Earth? On average is sunshine, incoming sunshine, being spread over the entire surface, spherical surface of the Earth? That is never happening either instantaneously or on average, is it? That is never happening. So he's stating that that's what they're doing. And my point is to say that that is something that never happens. Now, the connection to flat earth theory is that what this does is create a uniform input of 342 watts per meter squared onto a surface. That's what it does. It creates a uniform input of that value onto a spherical surface. Now, is that something that can exist in reality, in physics? How would you get the Earth to have a uniform input over all of its surface area around the entire sphere? That's not possible, obviously, is it? That's a physical non-existent, because the sunshine is obviously only ever coming in on one side of the Earth. Now, the effect to do that, to have a surface which is facing the sun and which is receiving uniform input from the sun is effectively a flat earth. That's what a flat surface would be. A surface which is facing the sun or a surface which is receiving uniform input from the sun has to be facing the sun. And the only way such a surface could exist with those properties of a uniform input of sunlight over its entire surface is if it were a flat surface facing the sun. That is why these diagrams can be written and drawn as flat earth with flat lines. Because the only, to repeat, the only possible way to have a surface facing the sun with a uniform input over its entire surface area is if that earth or that is if that surface was flat and that is why these diagrams are drawn with flat 
lines as if the earth is flat. The effect of spreading incoming sunlight over the entire sphere of the earth at once, which is something that never occurs and is not an empirical existent, is not a physical existent, and is not a theoretical existent even possible, the effect of doing this impossible thing of spreading sunshine mathematically over the entire surface area of the earth at once, the effect of that is to create flat earth physics. And that is shown because once you do that, you can draw that mathematics literally as a flat earth diagram, which is what they do, which is what we have right here, which is what Roy even referenced in his article and showed his own diagrams. And then, of course, what happens when you do that? So you're doing something that's non-physical and non-existent. You're spreading incoming sunshine over the entire sphere of the Earth at once. And you're saying, well, that's still spherical Earth. Yeah, but it's not an existent spherical Earth, is it? That is not an existent Earth that happens in reality. That is not a theoretical or empirical possibility that can happen in reality. Yet it is done mathematically, isn't it? And the effect of that, mathematically, is to create a surface facing the sun, which has a uniform input, and the only way that such a surface could actually physically exist like that, with that property, with those properties of sunlight falling on it, is if it were a flat plane. And that is why those vid th these diagrams are drawn as a flat plane. It's creating flat Earth physics out of a spherical earth. It is creating flat earth physics with its mathematics, with this mathematical process of spreading sunshine over the entire earth at once. And then once you do that, of course, you have diluted sunshine to a value that cannot create the climate, as I've discussed in the previous videos. And then by consequence, they have to invent this fake greenhouse effect of climate physics, where the climate creates itself with its own energy, because the sun doesn't have the energy to create the climate. So this non-reality-based process, this mathematical calculation or this mathematical process was done to create something which is physically and theoretically impossible, an earth with sunshine spread over the entire sphere. And then because that's impossible, another impossibility is created by consequence. If you were to have something like that, it would have to be a flat surface. That's what the effect is mathematically. And then that's why it is drawn like that, because that is effectively what it is. And then you get all the following consequential illogical extrapolations, such as this sunshine that can't create the climate and this fake greenhouse effect where the climate creates itself. So thank you, Roy. You actually entirely proved my point. Just because you state that that's what's happening mathematically doesn't mean that it's okay. Sure, your state, I know that's precisely the point. I entirely understand that sunshine is being spread over the entire sphere. I entirely understand that. The point is that that's physically and theoretically impossible and unrealistic. Obviously, because that's not what actually exists or even can exist, does it? The effect of that is to create flat earth mathematics, by consequence of which you, we literally then draw it as a flat line with flat earth mathematics. So thank you, Roy, for proving my point, And I hope everybody takes care. Okay, guys, take care. Have a good night.